So this has to be satisfied. And by using this relation, if you know G, then we can obtain Y. That's the homework you are asked to do until this uh, Thursday. Okay. If you see the text, there is a, 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 a very well-written procedure that you can follow up. The basic concept is as I explained like this. So what I am saying is, OK, this is the governing equation that governs the waves in a string. And this is the governing equation that governs the wave in a bar. And this is the solution method that we can use for one dimensional wave. Okay. Two approaches are possible. One is using Eigen function approach, and the other one is using Green's function approach. Okay. Now, what if I have excitation in compressible fluid? For example, if I excite this compressible fluid, then you can hear, you will hear. Okay. So wave will now propagate in three dimensions. When I shock, you can hear, and you can hear somebody over there can hear. So it propagates three dimensions. But as we see, the three dimensional acoustic wave can be understood by understanding one dimensional acoustic wave. So let's consider the acoustic wave in a one dimensional duct. Okay, suppose I am exciting the duct with this piston as I did for a string. When I excite a string, infinite string, the mechanical impedance at x equals zero was rho, rho, rho LCL, the same as the uh, characteristic impedance of a string. And if this is a finite, then mechanical impedance or driving point impedance was J rho LCL and cotangent KL. And KL certainly expresses the, the measure of wavelength or measure of space compared with the wavelengths. And we emphasize that KL is the most important measure that can, uh, that sees the space in terms of wavelengths. Right? That's what we learn. What happened in this case? Okay. Using same coordinates as we used for the string, then we can say the pressure at x at time t okay. okay for the string case we use the displacement as the measure and the displacement was assumed to be or we got or, or, or we found the displacement would be like uh, or, uh, for is for example sine kx minus omega t, and a is the amplitude. That is the propagating wave in right-hand direction. Okay. And for the finite string case, we, we, we can write the wave can be written as a sine uh, k L minus x and exponential minus j omega t, for example. Okay? That's the one dimensional way we observed for the string. Uh, what about the one dimensional uh, wave that can propagate in a duct? For example, here is a duct. I'm shorting over here. Then what would happen? What would happen? 
can we measure, can we, can we use the same, same physical variables such as displacement to describe what's going to happen in a duct? Okay, that has to be related how we hear, right? Because we are handling acoustics, audible acoustics. How we hear? Okay, we have ear, we have a membrane inside, eardrum, and eardrum experience some pressure change, then eardrum oscillate, and then oscillation transport to the three bones, and the three bones excite over window of cochlea, and the cochlea propagate the wave, then hair cell is activated, then we hear. So, obviously, the physical parameter we have to concern is not displacement, it should be pressure, okay, by intuition. Now, or by the discussion that we have, short discussion that we have. So I may write, this is A, and then I could say, when x equals zero and time t equals zero, I apply the force P, pressure, so I change this to P zero maybe, and then the amplitude at x equals zero at time t equals zero would be maximum because I am applying now, so I could say cosine kx minus omega t would be the wave that I can expect when I have infinite length duct. Okay? If I have a finite length duct, this would be different, like a cosine k l minus x and some time function. But obviously what I have, what I what we can see over this discussion is what's going to happen in a string and what's going to happen in a duct acoustic wave, one dimensional acoustic wave and one dimensional wave on a string quite similar, quite similar, right? So the general approach we used over here can be also used for analyzing acoustic wave, okay? The next question is, what would be the governing equation that governs the uh, physical behavior of, of, of the acoustic wave? To do that, how? How we, we can study? As we did for the analysis uh, for studying the, uh, the waves in a string, we have to look at what? Recall, we look at infinitesimal element of the string, right? To understand what's going on. The, to understand what's going on, an acoustic way, for one dimensional case, how we have to look at it, which, what we have to look at it. Hmm? Well, we have to look at it. For the string case, we look at the force on the line acting on infinitesimal element. For acoustic wire, what? We also have to look at infinitesimal element of compressible fluids. Right? As in analogous with what we did for the string. 